everyone, Black Tree TV live here at the 24th Annual SAG Awards. I'm your host, Jaleesa, and I'm joined here by my lovely producer, Jamal Finkley. We made it again. We made it again. <laughs> and you look more amazing than ever. Like, you just keep doing it better every year. Thank you. You look amazing as well. We're so excited about this carpet because this year marked a new trend where conversations no longer center only around entertainment and fil film. We're having conversations about pay equality, about the Time's Up movement, about Me Too, and it's just so refreshing to see that. So do you think people are going to come here making political statements? It seems that that would be the case. I mean, even their publicists instructed us that they want to have conversations not just about what they're wearing, but about meaningful issues. So we'll see if that actually plays out on the carpet. I think it's so refreshing to see that, you know, yesterday they had the Women's March all over the world, but here in Los Angeles, we saw some of our favorite actresses go out there and make some statements, including Viola Davis and Scarlett Johansson. So I can't wait to see what they have to stay, say here, especially during their acceptance speeches. Or oh, we can't really wait to see if James Franco is here on the carpet to address some of those issues that Scarlett Johansson uh, so vividly pointed out that he's, you know, a part of. Yeah, we'll be interested to see what the male uh, actors have to say as well about this recent movement. We know some of the Time's Up uh, group members will be here as well, so it'll just be really exciting. And speaking of male actors, we have a year where there's no clear favorites, and, and the, I, I'm just excited about all these pictures also competing kind of like on equal ground like we don't know who's gonna win this year it's not like the years past where there's a, a clear winner in every category Congratulations, Queen Sugar. thank you so much yes it means a lot to me I've been a, a big fan and, a, and uh, actually supporting Ava for a long time since middle of nowhere and when she told me she wrote this role in Queen Sugar with me in mind I don't think I've ever been so honored and how That's right. With the That's right. Can you talk about just the experience working with her and what really makes her such an amazing director? Ava knows the stories that she wants to tell. She knows the lens through which not only she, but many, many other people see the world. And she recognized that those stories and that lens hadn't been given the uh, the opportunity to shine and uh, and draw others to its light. And she's a very, very dedicated professional. And now, you know, there's plenty of amazing films that are being nominated. There's, we're so proud of people who are addressing political topics and so much going on. What are you most looking forward to during the ceremony? Seeing all the women on stage. I've been part supporting women's issues for a long time. I ran the Women in Film Foundation years ago. So this has been something that's meant a lot to me for a long time. And all the years and decades of women coming before us who laid this groundwork, these issues aren't new. This need is not new. And they were pioneers and they didn't have the same tipping point and, and global opportunity that we do now. So I want to thank them for all their diligent work that felt like maybe it was in a vacuum at the time, but it wasn't. We wouldn't be here without them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, I know. Well, there are 50 of us, or a million point five of us in the cast. So, you know, that is part of it. But, uh, yeah. What a women dominated cast and a part of all the diversity. What do you think it is about the show that really resonates with this audience? I think, you know, I think exactly what you said. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of different types of women from different experiences, from different backgrounds. And um, it's such an ensemble. There are so many stories to tell within that. And people can find themselves in, in different uh, characters, even though, you know, most people aren't in prison necessarily, but like, it's, it's just such a phenomenal show to be a part of because of that. And 2018 is already looking like an incredible year for women, yes. for women of color, women yes. of all Yes, yes. Time's up. It's so early in the year, so what is something that's on your vision board for 2018? I, I want to march. I want to say my piece on social media. I want to change minds. I want to empower women. I want to create a safe space for for uh, women and, and men and children, anyone uh, on set, and also in a variety of all industries. You know, I mean, this is this is a big time for change. Absolutely. And, yeah. Yes. I 
I hope so. I really do. I don't know the answer to that. That's an interesting question. I don't know the answer to that. Well, the reality is we don't know yeah. that. We don't have these conversations. Right. So That's true. Have I agree. I agree. I mean, a lot of us don't know what we're getting paid because we have agents and you know, people doing that for us. We don't talk about it amongst ourselves necessarily because it's an awkward conversation to have, but I think you're right. Maybe it is a conversation we should probably be more open about. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you. Good luck Thank you. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. Hello. Hi. 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 Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's just yeah. the shoe situation. Yeah. Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, great. First of all, I have to say I love the leftovers. Thank you. And I know you were a part of that casting. Yes. Like yes. So I just had to Oh my goodness, thank you. Mayor Lucy on the inside thanks you too. Yeah, the ending was great. The ending was great. Now, of course, you know, the reason we're here, Bloom and Jay is Esquire. Three billboards, yes. Amazing. Can you tell us what it was like being a part of both of these films? And and Wizard of Lies, really. Um, a blessing. You're working with diamonds in the rough. And uh, let's face it, Denzel is one of the most precious uh, jewels in the crown of cinema, period. Full stop. It is what it is. And um, to have done that, not even 10 years out of Yale drama, to check that off of my list of things to do, uh, first of all, I was never expecting. And then to have the kind of team we had, Bob Ellswick behind the camera, Dan Gilroy with the words and direction, and then Mr. Washington himself. I, w I would definitely walk with God. And he sees me, and I walk with him. And yeah. Yeah. Just Martin's honesty, the humor coming out of the humanity of the situation as it always does with a man like Martin, um, and just excitement. I just knew it was special. I always know it's special. You just never know that you're going to get this kind of reception because, you know, we didn't know if everybody would, you know, it'd be everybody's vibe, if you will, but it appears that it is. People are really feeling it. Oh, we always have a long way to go. There's always progress to be made. The day that there's not progress to be made is the day that we all lie in a coffin, right? So there's always more work to do, always. But it's happening. And I and a lot of the time I listen to older generations in black America say, I never thought I'd see a black president. I never thought this would happen, that our open secret would ever be exposed and really systematically change the institution that has been built up since the uh, 20s, really, 1920s. But it's happening, and we just need to hold on and move forward, keep going. Hi. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I love how you're embracing that 80s vibe with this dress. Yes. <laughs> but my dad looks like a bellhop from the 20s, so it's fine. How exciting to you know, have a series that's really kind of like this period piece, has this 80s inspiration. Can you just talk about what's your favorite moment or what you love about the 80s? I mean, I grew up on movies from the 80s. I grew up overseas and all of our movies were 80s movies because that's what we had. Um, I really love kind of just going back in there and just doing goofy stuff. I mean, a lot of things from the 80s probably wouldn't fly nowadays, but we just get to go in there and just have so much fun without restrictions. Um, you can't beat the music, you can't beat the hair. So it's been it's been interesting having a, uh, a mullet for about eight months now, but um, I'm rocking it. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe I got all this hair in here. Like, I was sitting there, I was like, oh my God, what? Two packs? Like, it's insane. Now, of course, what we love about Glow is such a woman empowering show, right? I mean, you have this single woman breaking back into the industry. Can you just talk about how you think Netflix got it right with this one and what's important for you with this one? I think. Netflix, I mean, they definitely got it right. I think what's great about it is, again, kind of going to the we don't hold back. Um, we talk about periods. We talk about abortion. We talk about abuse. We talk about divorce. We talk about so many things that I think a lot of shows kind of touch the surface but really don't delve into. And it's a lot of not saying this is right, this is wrong. We're just saying this is real. And that's what I really appreciate about our show is that we just try to show real women's issues and real human issues and how people react and interact with everyone around them. So that's what I like about it. Absolutely. Last question. Yes. You guys are nominated. Congratulations. Thank you. Where were you when you first found out about the nomination? I was literally on the side of my bed. I like flipped over, looked at my phone, saw 80 million texts from the girls and I was like, something up. <laughs> Something's happening. And I checked. So it was in my jams. Comfy at home. Excellent. Nice to meet you. How are you? Good. So first of all, congratulations. And Thank you. Yeah, we like pull it through. Yeah, yeah. You're doing, you're doing good. So, Thank you. It's so crazy. We've seen you grow so much with the show. 
what mm -hmm. has the experience been like when you think about when you first joined the cast to now being a young man? Um, I think it's it's definitely been a it's been a long road here. Uh, it's only been four years, which is kind of crazy to me. But um, yeah, growing up on television has definitely been an experience. I've learned new things about the industry that I don't think I would have learned otherwise. Um, so it's been really weird, especially when people come up to you every day and they're like, "Man, have you gotten taller?" And I'm like, "No, I'm the same height I was yesterday." All right, yeah. So um, it's it's been pretty tight. <laughs> yes. I've, oh, I've watched all three episodes. I'm ready to go. Uh, yeah, I've, I've loved them so far. Um, yeah, let's see where it goes. What am I thinking about? Um, I've, well, I actually just finished my college applications, did my mid-year report yesterday, 12 hours of homework, which was not fun, but I did it. Um, I'm looking at UCLA, you know, USC, Stanford, Columbia, um, Pepperdine, yeah, just a bunch of schools. No, I definitely want to stay in a dorm room. I mean, Gronus, Gronus, <laughs> it didn't deter me at all. Like, I feel like you can be your own person in college. You know what I mean? You don't have to fall into all of those kinds of traps of doing drugs and all those sorts of things. If you have a strong enough will, you can make anything happen. So I definitely want to stay in the dorm room, have the whole experience. You know how it is. Hi, Jaleesa. You look amazing. I see your glow. Thank is that you the Fenty? Yes. I, I knew it. I have it too. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, thank you. Somebody else said <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you're here at SAG Awards. Your show is nominated. It's such an amazing moment. Talk to us about when you first knew you wanted to become an actress and um, why. Well, when I first knew I wanted to become an actress, so earlier on, I, I really wanted to become a track star. Like, I ran track. And then I got a sports injury, and then I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I started sports modeling, and I literally came to California on a whim, like, I didn't think this was going to happen. Because, you know, when you're, when you're kids, you're looking at the TV, you don't think, like, oh, I can do that. You're like, oh, that was just made for that person. Their mom or dad was a television star, so they have to do it. So I never in a million years thought that it would happen. And then when I saw Viola Davis, and I was like, oh, my gosh, she looks like me. Like, I can do this and give it a shot. And I know I didn't, I didn't. I didn't have a theater background, so I didn't even know, but it made that even more harder because, you know, even getting representation, they're like, where did you study? And I'm like, oh, University of Georgia, go football, Bulldogs. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it made it even more harder, but just to see more and more people like me on the television, it gave me that drive and that push to keep going. And now you're here. Yes. So yes, thank you. Well. Now, speaking of faces who look like us, Black Panther. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Yes, I can't wait. The premiere is the 29th. Have you watched it already in full? No, none of us have. Okay. They only show us little clips. Then tell us about, I mean, you have Wakanda. You have the you Wakanda, have Wakanda have forever. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Tell us what, would, uh, what do you think Trump would think about Wakanda? Oh, gosh. Um, uh, I don't know. what He probably shit his pants. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah, no. Trump, we, we, ain't even, we don't even care what he thinks. That's the thing. That's the whole thing about Wakanda and Black Panther. Like, we don't care. We're not going to take your negativity. We're going to come with this, and it's going to be the best, and it's going to blow out all these other things. Because you know what I'm saying? Like, Black Panther, so many people have been waiting for this movie. This is very important. It's so important to the African community. And I can't wait for it to come out and break records, you know? Because the thing is, we're not going to fail. We're not going to fail. They think we're going to fail, but we're not. We're not. That's right. Because you guys are going to go out there and you're going to buy your tickets, you know, <laughs> and you're going to see this movie. Yeah. It's very anticipated. On my boat. Titties and hips on my boat. I hit a high note for my book. Hey! Well, now you woke for my book. Hey! And then rub a pum pum for my book. Yeah, you bitches better run for my book. Yeah, uh, what they say, I got a plate and a pig. Uh, Cause my book gon' be big. My book gon' be big. Yeah. What are you talking about? Look, honey, the mother black Hollywood, and everybody's asking if I did the audio. The answer is yes. For some reason, everybody loves my voice. I don't know why, I guess it's fabulous. But yes, I, um, I did record the audio book and it's flying off the shelf. The book, the hard copy is flying off the shelf. 
The reason the book is so successful is because I'm very honest, I'm raw, and I'm truth. Everybody is thirsty for the truth right now. Blackish is a very important show. We entertain, but we educate and inspire. Kenya Barris is a genius. He's at the helm of all of this. And I gotta say, you know, I've never said I'm honored to be on a show. I am honored to be on Blackish. For well, what, what makes it back? Well, it is uh, who? What makes it different? Like, why are you honored? Why do you feel so connected? Because to this show is speaking to the pressing issues of our time. The writers are the stars. Being able to bring that drama and comedy together, and and say exactly what needs to be said in these times. You know, women are standing up. Race relations, mental illness. You see, when something is an idea whose time has arrived. It is unstoppable. Women are unstoppable right now. Nobody's grabbing us by the pussy. Nobody's grabbing us by anything anymore. Am I clear? That's right. 45? That's right. Yes, Ms. Lewis. That was Jen, like literally I didn't know Jennifer's next to me until I heard her piercing voice was like, any more. I heard that like, I can't even do the way she does it. And She's so shy and retiring. She must have just put it on for you guys. You know, she's such an introvert. She Jennifer. can't, we can't get two words out of Jennifer. Did you see the way she posts on the red carpet? Could you imagine if I just went? <laughs> Hands out with the leg. <laughs> I think that's just inner Jennifer. I'm not sure that she is right, made just, for this. Yeah. Look at that woman go. Amazing. Now you guys don't actually really have any scenes with Jennifer. So do you? No, do you actually? No, have we? Never. No, we never have. We never had any experience. Well, I love the latest episode. You guys challenged like the talk that black men have to have with their yes. sons. Yeah. Was that something that you were privy to or aware of prior to that show or that episode? Um, I mean, the thing about being on the show as a white guy from Connecticut, I. No, I, I'm privy, to, I, I, even though I, I, I'm learning stuff every week and that is for real. And I know that my naivete feeds my character because my character's legitimately <laughs> naive to everything and so am I. And what I found beautiful about that episode is, yeah, of course, the talk that black parents have to have with their children is so insane to even think about that I will never have to have any talk like that with my sons whatsoever. But then that his character also had to come to people like us and talk to us about the talks that our parents yeah. had with us and the insecurities that every human being has on this planet and the problems that we all have, no matter what color you are. That was what I loved about that episode. And for me, you know, I grew up in Boston. So for me, and everyone says, oh, that's a racist ass town. My best friend growing up was black. And so I remember one time I was out with him and I said to him, I said, Teddy, and he's like, we were just hanging with some people and you got like totally black on me. And he was like from Trinidad, Tobago, his parents are immigrants. And I said, you got totally street and that's not you. What are you doing? You're such a hypocrite. And he was like, let me tell you something. I need to be white around white people. I need to, like he was coding, you know, he was, and he was, and I was right. 11 years old and he was teaching me like, he said, my parents said like, if you don't adapt and you can't adapt, you'll be cut out. So he had to be, you know, uh, it, all these things and I was just like you're a hypocrite because you're not being yourself and he's like dude life is complicated for me because I'm black for you you get to like be yourself and that it was an yeah. eye-opener so it wasn't the talk but for me it was wow that was like I I have it made in the shade you know for compared to what you have to go through like every situation I have to adapt to this adapt to that and like what was it we even had a moment recently I mean this is going pretty deep on something what, I made a comment on set by saying something about steel. Like I was like, No, it's Catherine. Yes. Catherine, Catherine said, Hey, say? did you steal? Oh you yeah, stole you, Dion's food. Yeah, stole it. And and we got we got talked to a little bit by uh, some of the black actors about being like yeah, Anthony, accusing Anthony them about said. stealing. And, and I'm not really he getting said, to it. But he yeah, said yeah. just it, we were just making a joke. And Catherine, one of the actors, said, Oh, did you just steal Dion's food? And Anth goes. I'm just saying, when you use that verb around black folks, it, it just, it, it just I'm, right. I'm not slapping your hand, but it just, it sets my spine up. And, and she's that's a, a learning And lesson. she's like, no, like no, no, I didn't. Yeah. And he's like, I'm just telling you, culturally, it's where I come from. Yeah. You use that word. And I'm like. And what's great about this day and age is yeah. 10 years ago, would have been like, dude, shut up. Stop it. But now we're learning. Now we're actually learning that, wow, you know, 
Well, we appreciate it. I have to say you guys did an incredible job with the episode, and I think it was very important that your character was the one that kind of brought it to light right. because that's important for people watching. So we loved it. And so thank you so much. We're so pleased and feel blessed so much to be able to part of this because it's such an important audience and story we're telling and every Kenya always yeah. says let's he hopes the episodes ask questions and poke the bear make us look at ourselves start a conversation and at its very best that's what we do and do I mean, well it's a dream come true yeah imagine there's so many great shows that have nominated here not, not so, many people some are not so great not, some too. are fine some yeah. are fine <laughs> I'm fine but to get to get asked questions like this that's pretty that's awesome. amazing great how's it going tonight oh I love your hair Thank you. yes Yes, I'm loving it. So, of course, congratulations. You all have several nominations. Congratulations to you. Where were you when you first found out that you all were nominated? Um, I was in the makeup trailer getting my makeup on for Tam May because we're still shooting. We're shooting season two. And they told us, I said, wait, wait, what? I was very confused and whatnot. And it was pandemonium. I mean, we shook the whole trailer. Now Netflix is, I mean, they're, they're breaking so many barriers and, and starting so much conversation. Can you talk about what it's like to have them as a partner and why do you feel they're kind of like getting it right within film and TV? Uh, you know, they really invest in each project and, and everyone on the team at the Netflix, at Netflix is really hands on and it's not like all, all the executives are very hands off. Everyone works together. It's a total team. We get together multiple times. We just got together last night and had a party. It's really like a family, all the shows together. We all congratulate one another. I think just like the support and the way they're doing it, it's like fresh and new and right. So what's your, besides Glow, of course, what's your go-to binge watch Netflix show? Well, I just finished um, Orange again uh, the day before yesterday. And then the, last, the last season, I was like, I was going to watch it again. Yeah real quick you know why not <laughs> well congratulations and good luck tonight thank you thank you You're welcome. have a good evening that's all right um, good thank you thank you yeah. What do you think, baby? When he shows up, I figure that, that that's it. That's what it's about. That and also the scene with with Sam when he comes back and delivers his badge. There are a lot of ways that that could be played, but he was such a, a force as, as an actor just to play the humanity rather than playing the revenge. You know, so it was a wonderful piece in that respect that I, I felt we can really make a bit of a difference here. We can either play the uh, play it by rote, you know, or we can use this moment to say there's another way to deal with this, you know. Yes. Now, Sterling K. Brown, he mentioned during his Golden Globe speech how important it is for a role to be specific for a black man as opposed to just for anyone. How do you feel, what do you think the importance was in your character in Three Billboards in being a black man given the... the, the, the Good question. I think that what worked for me in this was more my director, who was also the writer, who is a foreigner looking at America and holding up America. What I enjoyed about that was that I could have a dialogue with him and say, no, we're not going there. And that, I guess, allowed me to find um, the black man in that situation in the much more real way, rather than going, they call me Mr. Tibbs. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, and it is necessary. We have a completely different trajectory into history than, than any of our white counterparts. You know, so it is necessary to have that conversation and to keep it buoyant and to keep it moving forward, not just for my generation, but for the next one. Yes. Well, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very, very much.
Thank talking you. about. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Society. Thank you. Society. Wow. Okay, let me let me take it in. Let me take it in. Okay, you are ready. <laughs> you look amazing as well. Thank you. You do. You do too. Everybody does. You guys look so beautiful and handsome. I, I, I'm not, you know, I think men are great. I just want to say that I know we're in this Me Too movement, but I just have to tell you that I think men are dynamic and wonderful. And I have a son, I, I have a husband, and I love all, everybody. I, I love gay, straight, transgender, you know, whatever, but men are beautiful. So, um, and don't, don't, don't not think that you are, because you are. Now, since you brought it up, I'm curious, given all that's going on with Time's Up, with Me Too, with so many conversations, Black are you having matter. those conversations at the dinner table since you have a son and husband? Um, you know, um, my son is 11, and he is really so uninterested in what I have to say at this po moment. You know, I'm, I'm basically boring and uncool. So I haven't been able, like, I'll, I'll say things to him, like, your teeth are like an iceberg, like the Titanic. You know, there, there's stuff going on in there, and if you don't take care of your teeth, it'll be a shipwreck. And it'll be like, what are you talking about? So for me to actually get into a real conversation about Black Lives Matter or Me Too or Time's Up, I, I think that would be like, you know, he's not ready. Now, speaking about Black Lives, you know we love Insecure. I love! Huge, huge fan. Tell us, is there he's any... He's a genius. He's amazing. No, no, she's, she's, getting no she's a genius. She's a genius. What makes you say that? Because, because what Issa Rae is doing politically is she is opening up the carpet for all of us to walk on and hold hands and be together. She is opening up the picture of where we need to be. She is taking conversations that we have not been having, and she is putting them out there. And sometimes I read those scripts and I'm like, Whoa, okay, whoa, we're going there. And I'm like, so proud of you. So proud of, so proud of them. So proud of that show. I'm so proud, and I'm so proud to have a little part in it. And I'm so proud of Stranger Things, and I'm I'm so proud of Orange is the New Black, and I'm on Homeland now. And oh, you're busy. I, yeah, and I feel like I'm getting to do a lot of shows that are, are very political, and I'm very political, so I'm, I'm blessed. I'm grateful. Absolutely. You know, well, enjoy your evening. Oh my gosh, thank you so much and thank you for t t chatting. Thank you so much, right. Catherine. Take care, bye. Bye. That's rude, that's rude. Okay. You got to what it said, yes, please. Hi. Hi. How are you? Thank you. We were talking to some of your cast and we were saying every year Orange is the New Black is nominated. What is it about the show that you think really makes people recognize? Darling? Uh, I think that it's just such an unusual crew of people and there's so many sparks that fly when you see all these different women on the screen that it's just it's exciting and it continues to be that way I think and it's like diversity but in front and behind the camera it's a formula people have responded to it's good writing it's wonderful acting so what what is there not to like <laughs> right. ¿De Dominicana. Ah, Boricua. Ah, sí. Hermana Caribeña. <laughs> so tell us also, you know, I think there's some pretty heavy topics that you all tackle on Orange is the New Black. Is it ever emotional on set when you're filming some of these scenes? I mean, I still think back to the night when Samira's character got killed and there were so many tears. That was, we were all just barely holding it together. We feel all this stuff. I feel like, especially that episode, it was a 22-hour day, and uh, it, it, we can feel what it meant in terms of the depth that we were carrying in terms of society. It wasn't just a fictional s story happening. There was a lot of depth to it. Well, congratulations and good luck this evening. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy your evening. Jason. Good. I'm not a real pleasure to meet you. It's nice meeting you. Yeah, I'm loving the blue. Oh, well, you know, we got to do a little something. Yeah, got to do a little really something. Sharp. Now, I am curious. I know you work with the foundation, and mm -hmm. diversity is a big initiative for you all and equality. You know, sometimes as black press, we feel like there's a huge disparity between the opportunities we get and our white counterparts. I'm curious, <laughs> does that ever become a conversation among the foundation, just overall the dynamic of, of media? Well, no, we have, in, in general, yes, it's a conversation. And specifically when it comes to black entertainment media, no, we haven't had that conversation. Give a brother a call. Yes, we you would know, love to have, see you have no, this conversation. Because, Seriously, but, because sometimes we feel like we're left out of that conversation about the opportunities. Right, 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 right. Well, I mean, and, and there's, a, there's a whole dynamic of, you know, 
the, the size of an organization, that sort of thing, and that's a real piece of this entertainment business. But uh, you know, as we know, you, you also have to that the, the demographics change, the the economics change because people push. You know, so uh, so mess, message received. And also, in order to build your brand, you kind of have to get notable people to talk to. You right. know what I mean? We right. show up at the same places. We want the same opportunities. Right, <laughs> right, right. Well, always, you, you know, I'm always here. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Well, tell us about, you know, we heard about a Grey's Anatomy spinoff. We didn't know that was news to us. Where are you at in the development process of that, and, and what would that look like? We're shooting. We're shooting. It'll be on the air in March. So uh, we, we uh, I spent all night, Thursday and Friday night, you know, wrapped up in, uh, you know, in fireman's gear, out of, we were shutting down freeways and whatnot. So uh, it's, it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot not to be, you know, we're firemen, not to, you know, make the joke too hard. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, and it's going to be everything you love about Grey's Anatomy. It's going to be everything you love about Shonda Rhimes shows but with a whole new cast of characters that uh, you're going to fall in love with, I think. Absolutely. You know? Now, 2018 is already looking like it's going to be an incredible year for film and television, especially for black people. Mm -hmm. We have to ask, what are you most looking forward to in 2018? Can I be real? Yeah. Can I be real? Can you be a kid about it? Yes. I want to see Black Panther. I'm, I'm really trying to say, look, I'm a comic book geek from back in the day. And so I'm so happy for, you know, have so many friends that are in the flick. And I'm just, I'm just excited that, that, you know, Wonder Woman in 2017, I took a bunch of eight-year-olds, you know, that were, yeah, all the girls and boys got up, pretended to be Wonder Woman when the movie was done. I'm kind of excited, excited to see that happen where everybody jumps up at the end of Black Panther, white kids, black kids, Asian kids, pretending to be Black Panther for a second. That's going to be a good time. Team Wakanda. You know what I'm saying? Wakanda is what's up. <laughs> so much. All right. All right. It's a pleasure. Nice I'm serious you. though. We would love to be here. Hi. I love oh, your yes. natural hair popping. We knew what to do. Yes. <laughs> now tell us, of course, Sterling K. Brown plays your father. How incredible. What type of advice does he give you on set? I think that the most advice that he gives me is to never give up because right Sterling has been acting all his life and now he is finally getting like his dream moment getting Emmys getting Grammys so no matter what how even like how slow it takes to get to your goal as long as you get to your goal that's what matters and now you know season one we all were very emotional to lose William what was it like shooting that on set and were you all emotional I was actually very emotional because I can relate to it I had a um, like a grandfather that I didn't really know, but he came into my life, and I was spending lots of time with him. I was really young, but then he he left, and I got like that same sentimental. I was really feeling empathy over Tessa's character, and that brought like the life into my character. And I really can't cry on TV, so you know you have to hold it in. Well, you know what? We have to say we're so proud of you, young black woman. Keep you. doing your thing. Yes. Keep Black's striving. Magic. Yes. Thank you so much. Love you. God bless. Good luck, beautiful. Hi, beautiful. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm loving this blue. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How are you guys doing? Happy New Year. Good. Happy New Year. You know what? Speaking of the New Year, what's on your vision board for 2018? Oh, my goodness. Um, balance. So I want to balance with my spiritual life, um, physical life in terms of working out, and yeah, family, friends, work, balance. Congratulations. I mean, again, Orange is the New Black. Oh, it's it's amazing. amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you guys still get excited every year when you find out? Of course. I mean, it's time to play dress up. It's time to meet with your friends. It's a, it's a good moment. And why do you think it is, you know, that people resonate so much with the cast? Like, it's, it's, it's so unlike anything we've seen. But what is it? I think there's so many different characters on this show. And then when you look at it, it could either remind you of a sibling or a cousin. We're just crazy. It's just so many different personalities. And people can relate to that. Well, good luck this evening. Thank you. Good to see you. Bye. What's up? How are you? Good to see you. Are you staying for the after party? I love Yeah, I'm going to the after party. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.
He be grabbing them quick. I don't need that. getting any of the film nominees. This dress, this is phenomenal. Thing you're wearing. Thank you. Gold rings, yeah. This dress is giving me, I'm ready for Black Panther vibes. Oh, oh, is it? <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> I am. Well, I'm of course, the rain. we are excited. Get Out, mm -hmm. nominated, incredible film. Are you feeling nervous or how are you feeling about all these nominations? I mean, it's 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 amazing. Uh, what's nerve wracking is, is all of this. <laughs> But it's great. It's also really great. I, you know, it's experience. <laughs> now, of course, the film was Jordan Peele's first time directing a film. What was that experience like working with Jordan? And does he have any quirks about his directing that you could share with us? Oh, he is incredible. And I would advise anyone, I mean, of course, anyone who gets a chance to work with him to jump at it because he's very smart. He's very easy, fun, but you know, he has his vision and he's very clear on what he wants. So, and that's good in a director. Now, last question. Have you seen the funny memes about people saying that celebrities are in a sunken place? No. <laughs> you haven't seen it. It's like a running joke. Like, oh, he's in the sunken place. Oh, oh, oh. Like, uh, it's become like which, a thing, like which one do they did they do that? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. I have seen those. They do that a lot with the men who date the Kardashians. Right, right, <laughs> right. I mean, and 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 you know, in the spirit of compassion, I think we all have our, um, you know, moments, you know, ideas of, you know, being in a sunken place and assimilation, and you know, it's unfortunate when it's to that extreme, but. It's something we all can be um, connected to. Well, good luck. We're rooting for Get Out. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Peace, peace, that's peace. Great. How you doing, brother? God is great, lady. No, that just means the connection is beautiful like that. What's happening? What's happening? Now, Mudbound, you know everyone's so excited. What do you think it is about the film that people really need to take away and understand? Oh, man, they need to take away that we all need love. Because it's a two-hour depiction, honest depiction of American history post-World War II, and it's brutal, it's honest, it's ugly, it's muddy. But the very last word of the movie is love. And tell us, I mean, we're also proud of Mary J. Blige for the recognition she's given in playing this role. What was that experience like seeing her go through this journey? And, of course, I'm sure you're rooting for her. Oh, it was amazing. Mary J. Blige plays Florence Jackson, my wife. Uh, it was amazing to see her come straight from the Bad Boy Reunion Tour, 20,000 plus fans to be in this small, quaint, intimate, honest discussion as Florence Jackson with Hap Jackson in Mudbound. So it was phenomenal to see Mary J take that transition from singer to, to storyteller. And it was a beautiful thing to partake and be a part of. And of course, speaking of blessings, you are blessed with Mudbound being a part of Stranger Things as yes, well. I'm back to back. I'm like Mike Tyson in here, you know what I mean? <laughs> Last year we got it for Stranger Things. Hopefully, God willing, this year we get Mudbound. That's best ensemble cast two years in a row for me, so I can't complain at all. I'm just I'm just showing up prepared, though, you know what I mean? That's right. Well, yeah. good luck, brother. We are, we're glad to see you shining. Thank you, lady. What's your name? Jaleesa. Jaleesa, all my pleasure. Pleasure to meet you. All Enjoy right. your evening. Good luck. Dion, yeah, we well, we love Gronish. Thank you. Why did they give you a professor role? Like, how did he get into 
he must have been smoking some weed or something. He was just like, you know it'd be funny. And I think that's how it came about. I don't know. I have no idea. But, yo, shout out to Kenya for creating it, calling me up, telling me about it. I was like, yo, it's crazy, but let's do it. And, you know, he, he's a visionary, so it happened and it went down, and we're excited. And what type of advice do you give to, it's a young cast, you know, yeah. Yara, Trevor, they're really coming up, yeah, some yeah, of the yeah. actors. What type of advice do you give them on set, and how do you mentor them? I just always tell them be original stay on your craft stay focused and uh, that's what they are I have a wonderful cast wonderful students I love all my students they're fantastic and uh, yeah they are, they got more and more in store to bring to the world so I can't wait for everybody to see the rest of the season now last question I am curious because you're a comedian yeah. there's a lot of sensitivities in the world about a lot of different topics and things do you yeah. think that hinders comedians or, or what challenges does that yeah, present? it does it keeps us from really comedy is comes from truth and when the world don't allow us to be truthful, then you don't get what you deserve. And so that's where we're at with it. And uh, until people finally let us have freedom of speech, then this is the world we live in. And it's, it's horrible from a writing standpoint. And it's horrible to the people that know about it. But, you know, hopefully it'll change soon and uh, we can get people what they really deserve. Because comedy is the last raw form of expression, so, Absolutely. yeah. Well, enjoy your evening. Thank, Thank you, you so you much, Leon. My name's Jonathan. Nice to meet you, Jonathan. And you? Um, now, you, of course, Mudbound, your character is fairly mean. What do you channel? Fairly mean? <laughs> what do you channel to portray this type of character? How, what's the, what does your preparation look like? Well, before you were born, mm. uh, I grew up, uh, I, if you, how, let me just back that up. If you ever have any doubt about the virulent hatred, you look at some of the old clippings of kids trying to go to school with women with spittle coming out of their mouth, or the horrible pictures of a man that is hanged and kids smiling and celebrating in front of it. I'm, it happened. It happened, and we have to talk about it. Well, and I played that racist. Absolutely. Now, yesterday marked 10 years, Breaking Bad, I believe. Can you talk about that franchise and how do you think it's kind of changed the direction of TV, of television? Well, I think they're great writers and great storylines. And I, uh, and now they have me playing in Better Call Saul, playing younger than I was 10 years ago. <laughs> Figure that one out. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. First of all, congratulations. I'm sure Get Out is going to open so many doors for you. How are you feeling? Um, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm in a dream, you know. Uh, Biggie said it was all a dream, you know. I, I'm, I'm amongst all these people I've watched my whole life, and, and now I'm standing next to them, and it's an honor. Absolutely. Now, you know what's interesting? I think Get Out, of course, black people get it, right? Do you think that when white audiences watch the film that they really understand the message and takeaways from it? I feel like they did. I feel like, you know, I, I've seen the movie like seven times in the theater and uh, different audiences, different crowds, different amounts of people. Uh, and and the, the response is always the same. You know, people are laughing, yelling, you know, screaming. They're in horror. They're in pain. They feel for Chris. They're crying. They, we all cheer at the end together. So I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty universal. Could you imagine if they would have chose the original ending? You know, uh, that's, that's, that's a big reason of why I, I really wanted to get this part, you know, like that original ending really hit home for me and uh, and hopefully uh, people learn something from that original ending, you know. Now I would love your thoughts on the kind of the controversy around people were really upset that it was nominated in the comedy genre as opposed to drama, um, comedy as opposed to drama. What are your thoughts on that? And uh, well, you know, I, I can I can definitely understand those people's concerns about that. Uh, but me, you know, I'm always trying to take make lemonade out of the lemons, you know. And uh, I believe that you know whatever gives us the recognition that I feel like this movie deserves and allows us to be amongst our peers here, you know, I, hey, give, put us in a, a, a musical all you want, you know, as long as people are getting that message, you know, that's what's important. Well, good luck. We're definitely rooting for Get Out. Oh, man, thank you so much. I Welcome. Appreciate it. Pleasure meeting you.
and we're just grateful that people are listening because that's what it's about right now and helping to instigate the change. It's going to be slow, it's going to be arduous, but we're all in it together. And it's cool colour to, to wear colour again. <laughs> uh, <coughs> sequence. Sequence. Hey everyone, so we're wrapping up the red carpet, about to head inside, but we wanted to give you a quick recap of everything that was going on. I have my lovely ladies here joining me. Hi, I'm Charlie. Hey everybody. <laughs> and Ludmila, or Ludi. <laughs> and of course, I'm your host, Jaleesa. We want to talk a little bit of recap of some of the fashion we saw. Coming off of the Golden Globes, we saw that people, of course, didn't wear their black today, so they opted for a little bit more color, a little flow. We saw a lot of beautiful color, especially from the glow cast who embraced their 80s. Ladies, what were some of your favorites? Oh, you know what? Um, Mary actually walking through was just amazing. She did wear black in her white. She looked amazing. And Holly, of course, Holly Berry looked amazing too. Yeah. Holly Berry does no wrong. Who also does no wrong? Nicole Kidman. I mean, you know everyone loves Big Little Lies, but one thing we can't deny is that Nicole Kidman is flawless. Always with her boo, Keith Urban by his side. What were some of your favorites, Charlie? Do you know who stood out? to me in their green number it was Niecy Nash she looked amazing I loved her dress yes so we had a lot of fun speaking with a lot of the cast but you know what unfortunately there were a lot of people that we didn't get a chance to speak with and it was a little bit disheartening because a lot of the people we didn't get to speak with were our own people I mean we didn't get Yara Shahidi we Lupita wouldn't yes, even stop for her people yes that was that was a little sad you know to like our brothers and sisters that we couldn't get was a little disheartening because we do support them in their films and for them not to at least acknowledge black tree for one we're black and we're here on the carpet to support them and hoping that they win because it's been a crazy year thus far so we just know what? if anything I think what's important to recognize is that you know so often Hollywood pushes for equal opportunity for yeah. black women and for white women for black men and for white women but we never really bring up the press yeah. and you know what we need equal opportunity as well for our counterparts because we're journalists but you know what ladies they're already shutting down we have to head inside make sure y'all stay tuned black tree TV here Jaleesa like I'm face the okay Hello. Congratulations, Julissa from Black Tree TV. Um, thank you for always being a true reflection and representation of black love. Let thank me say you. that. Appreciate it. Um, you're always vocal about the differences between black actors and white actors and opportunities. So apologies in advance for this loaded question, hmm. but I do think it needs to be addressed. Go for it. Are you aware of the disparities between the opportunities given a black journalist in comparison to our white counterparts? And do you think there's any plan in Hollywood to make sure that the media room starts to reflect the diversity that we're beginning to see in the industry? I told you it's a loaded question, but it needs to be addressed. Just taking a look around the room, like, you got a point. It's a lot of white people. Uh, you know what, I'd, I'd never paid attention. And shame on me for not having done so. But maybe this conversation is the beginning of, of something taking place, you know? It is, you get that conversation when you're a young person, you gotta work twice as hard to get just as far. Um, and that, you know, I don't know if that holds true exactly or whatnot, but it's something that's been etched, burned into my mind, you know, to be able to receive similar opportunities. The, the latitude for mistakes is less. If we had president number 44 talking about grabbing people by the vagina, I don't think he'd still be working. You know, he wouldn't last it eight years. So it is representation, diversity, making sure that everyone's voice can be heard is important. So thank you for bringing it up to me. I'm sorry I hadn't paid attention. Sure. Hi, Sterling back here, Maureen from Hi, Entertainment Maureen. Weekly. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask. <laughs> You have received so much awards love for this role, and you are always so gracious about uh, thanking the rest of your cast. So what does it mean to you to get this award tonight, as well as receive the Ensemble Award? This was awesome. <coughs> Excuse me, I, I've lost my voice. I had a cold that was going around, and then I was in Vegas for work. Um, 
but my cast has been so generous in celebrating me and this wonderful journey that I've been on that tonight we get a chance to celebrate each other. We get a chance to celebrate together. This is the dream. We were all waiting for them to say The Handmaid's Tale, and we were all waiting to politely and, and you know, deservedly say, Handmaid's Tale is dope. But when they called our network television drama, you know, don't know, none of these other shows look like ours. Like the fact that we get a chance to come and we won? This is a very special night. I told my cast, this is like a top five special night in terms of these awards. It's so nice to be able to do it with your family. Yeah. This is my Hi, congratulations. Hi. Thank you. Um, <coughs> regarding the Time's Up conversation or so, do you think male actors can do more to support women in terms of uh, you know, safety uh, at work and about uh, pay disparity? Oh, good questions. Okay, first question first. Yeah, you can hear me down here. Okay, just feels. For me, it, it has been a wonderful opportunity to take stock of the fact that I actually have privilege uh, and that I have male privilege. And, and recognizing that things that I, I take a lot of things for granted. I remember when my wife and I would go home. We lived in New York. We went to grad school at NYU. And we would be up late for rehearsal. And I said, well, I'm going to take the subway home. And she's like, I ain't going to take the subway home. It's 12 o'clock. Why am I going to jump on the subway? I was like, the subway's perfectly safe. What are you talking about? And so I would get in the cab with her because she's like, but it's safe for you. Or maybe you think it's safe for you, but it's a different world for me. And it's always the responsibility of the minority to understand how to negotiate the majority's world. Black people got to know how to live in a white world. Gay people have to know how to live in a straight world. Women have to know how to live in a man's world. But it's nice when people who are at the top take a second to look at and consider what it's like for the minority. And what the Time's Up movement has been about for me is just really taking stock of the fact that there are certain things that I have not registered and I can be more conscientious. And hopefully it's registered with other men in a similar way that things that are funny to you may not be funny to everyone. And that there is a responsibility that we have to make sure that our work environment is comfortable for all. Because it's not always about maliciousness and nastiness. Sometimes it's just about downright thoughtlessness. And we can all stand to be a bit more thoughtful. With regards to pay disparity, I'll let you know when I make a lot of money um, what that's like, but I'm still you know, climbing my way up. So. Yeah. What are you gonna say? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lonnie Chavis. <laughs> He's a handful, and you're about to see why. Hey, the mic's blocking your face. Make sure. Is it just me, or do I think that that was a little offensive? <laughs> okay, well, first, all glory to God. I would like to thank my family who believe in me and help me follow my dreams. It just takes so many people to make a TV show happen, so I want to especially say thank you to the incredible cast I work with that helped me become a better actor. And I'm just happy that This Is Us has allowed me to bring diversity to Hollywood and create a place for me where I fit in. Thank you, guys. Told you. Told you. But questions for anybody, because you know, take this microphone. Hi, Sterling, right here. Yes. Hey, how are you? Well, thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And you too. <laughs> um, keeping in mind what you were taught as a kid, you have to work twice as hard. With all that's happened in this last couple of years, how much credit do you give to working hard, and how much do you give to luck or, you know? Right. Good fortune. You know, you know I, I, a lot goes to good fortune. I mean, I, I recognize that I'm a blessed young man, and I know so many talented people who are not experiencing the moment that I'm experiencing right now. But at the same time, you make your own luck. You, you prepare. You work your butt off. And when opportunity matches up with that work, then you just try to walk into the end zone. 
You try not to stumble. You try not to get in your own way and just receive that what is waiting for you. Because this is what I believe. I believe what's mine is mine and nobody can take it away from me. What's ours is ours and nobody can take it away from us. Like, I believe that this is ultimately a friendly universe and that there's enough carrots for everybody to eat. You know what I'm saying? So to be up here with these people right now, like the fact that we all get a chance to stand in front of you guys, like in victory, this is a beautiful moment. Beautiful. Scott Hoover with Al. Um, picking up on that, Sterling, you guys play a family, and from what I've seen, you guys travel together to all these events. You feel like a family together, and I wonder if all, all of you, <laughs> if all of you can talk. <laughs> If you can talk about that sense of family that you've developed yeah. as being a part of this show, even more so than, than the usual cast on something would develop. I'll take it for a second, and then I want somebody else to chime in, too. But, yeah, go for it. You putting up awards? Stun on them. Stun on them. Um, listen, it, it is like a family. Like, it, it seems so cliche, and it seems like, do they really love each other as much as it seems? And the answer is yes. Like... The joy is what I feel for my brother and sister, for my wife, for my, for my mother and father, my mom who's younger than me, my dad who's younger than me, but it's like mom and dad, you know what I'm saying? These kids, my children, the younger versions of us, like when I see, when I watch the show and I see Lonnie or Niles do something, like I'm feeling for Randall. And it's like, I, I watch it as, uh, as an audience member, the same way as everybody else, because you can't fake a relationship on screen if you don't have it off screen. And I don't know what the alchemy is, what Dan Fogelman saw in all of us and our producers, but he brought together a group of wonderful thespians who happen to be even better individuals. So I'll let it, somebody else take something. Anybody want to say something about it? Are we a family? That was me. My talk in Minneapolis. Yes. And I think what you were just tapping in at, on is how much you move us. Every week we sit here and we watch the show and we're so delighted that you guys won a network show and you move us. We cry and we try not to cry. And is there something, you just mentioned it, Sterling, that you watch it as a fan and you cry. Yeah. Mandy, I'd be curious to hear, you know, your feelings about it. Do you cry? I mean, you're so good. Me? Come on, tell us tell us a little something about your character. You I, moved I, us. I don't want to speak on behalf of everybody. I mean, I think we all are moved by the material. It's hard not to. I cry. Milo can attest. Milo and I like to make a, a, a plan of going to watch every episode together if we can in Dan's office. And um, it's just remarkable because, like, these experiences right now, all of us together, we never get to, to we're never in one room. Right. And so this, that's what makes this all so much more special and celebratory like we're here together celebrating the hard work that we all put in and it, it but being recognized by our fellow actors like it's I, I can't even put it into words yet it's mind-boggling <laughs> yes, uh, this question is for Mandy um, Brandy within style all the way in the back can you see me I'm waving I'm like in the back left okay cool uh, <laughs> I just wanted to know, with everything that's going on with the Time's Up movement, what advice would you give to young women who are watching the SAG Awards and, you know, wanting to be where you are, any of the women up here? Me specifically? Yeah. Or? You. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's a heavy question. I mean, I'm, I'm honored to support the movement. I think everyone on this stage is honored to support the movement. And I think we all feel encouraged by the momentum forward and that it's an ongoing conversation and that we all can participate and be agents of change. And yeah, I don't know. Any other women? Sue, you want to say anything? Alex? About seeing the Time's Up movement. Yeah. Oh, what would I say to yeah. Okay, what would I say to you? Uh, what I would say to young women is, is that uh, the times they are a changing, that there are some people who are paving a pathway through their own courageousness, and um, there are visionaries who now see a new way to go and be in this industry. And also that we're not, it, you know, it's not some competition between men and women, that there's just the need to be seen 
uh, in the same light, in the same respect, and equally. And so just like women before me paved the way for me to be just a normal black woman on television that resonates with any culture, um, it's the same way that the way is being paved for women to be able to showcase their talents without having to uh, sacrifice any of their own self-respect. So I think that that's sort of the way the tide is going. We got something to add on, y'all. <laughs> Come on, Ash. We dropped we drop that 20 pound thing. All right. Hi, my name is Aris Baker. All right. Um, okay, so for young women, I would like to say to never give up because I know that lots of people are going through, t going through tough times right now. And I've been be being in this business for seven, I mean, since I was seven years old and I'm now accomplishing my goal. So I want all of you guys to know that no matter how long you get to your goal, no matter how far your goal is, as long as you take your time, as long as you get there, it doesn't matter how slow it takes you, that's all that matters. Okay, thank you. Hello, Gary, right here, right here in front of you left. Hi. First, congratulations. Thank you. Excellent role. I know so many characters you play that you got to build a backstory to, but with Winston Churchill having so much written about and so many quotes, um, do, you, do you feel like that, did you pull from anything in particular that was uh, text from him or stuff that, to build this character, or, or how, how is that different than playing characters that are more created than? Um, well, there's obviously the, the material on Churchill is voluminous. I mean, it's, I think it's 800 books that were written about him. He wrote 50. Um, and you can't, there is, I mean, I'm still reading them. So, I mean, there, this is going to be, a, a, I would imagine, a, a, my curiosity about him is a lifelong journey. But uh, what I the the real key to him there's 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 so much you can get from the the, the, the written material, but um, at, at some point it the, the the intellect the intellectual side of it has to stop, and you have to somehow kind of take all of that and and metabolize it and make it into a living, walking, breathing person. Um, the big the, the big help to me was the, uh, the, the footage of him at this, at this time. And, my, and the revelation to me was that he, uh, just the energy and the dy dynamism of him was, was, was just so extraordinary. So I sort of, st I started, um, with this, you might say, I started out with outside in, and, and I tried to get the sort of the, the physicality and the walk, and then that gives you gives you clues. But um, I was lucky that I had um, uh, some Churchill scholars who could direct me to certain reading material. You know, you've got you haven't got you haven't. I had I had a long time, but. There's a lot of books, and um, so it was handy to, to have someone sort of guide me to the cherry pick, you know, the prime ones. Hi, uh, Melody Waintall from Baniades. Hello. Could you share your story on how you became an actor and what it meant to be a young actor as an old man? And, and the last bit was what it would it... What it meant to you to be a young actor as an old man. Well, I, uh, I saw, I was around 14, and I saw um, the performance. Um, there was a, a rerun of a, of a Malcolm McDowell film. Uh, I don't even know if it, I haven't seen it for so many years, and I wouldn't even know if it would hold up but it was a Brian Forbes movie called, in England, we called it The Raging Moon. And um, there was something quite remarkable about 
Malcolm's, there was a sort of wonderful menace and vulnerability to him uh, they were just, that were just sort of happening at the same time. And I was completely captivated by that grin and those huge, huge, big blue eyes. Um, and it and it was like a light. It was like a lightning bolt, or like it was like the lights in the room got got brighter. I I uh, thought there and then that 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 I want I want to do that, and that's what I want to do um, for a living. And I have been um, truly uh, very very lucky and very blessed. It, it, it's been. Um, it's had its ups and it's had its ups and downs, its hills and valleys, but um, it has been quite um, a, a, a remarkable journey. My, if I would, actors, young actors, some young actors, not all of them, but we're in a sort of time where a generation wants to get everything instantly, and they want to take you know uh, four weeks of uh, four weeks of acting school and then they've got it, you know, or they think they've got it. And um, there is, there's no, there's no substitute for the work. Um, you gotta really, I think, earn your dues, put, put, put the, the, the work in. Right here in the uh, front to your left, uh, Russ from Hollywood Life. Uh, you mentioned uh, ups and downs, but in the wake of all this award success, how do you feel that, um, your standing in Hollywood is has changed, if at if at all, in the last couple months. I, I, I mean, we have um, you have your moment in the sun. Careers, uh, there's no guarantee that you're just going to keep. There's no guarantee you're going to keep working. Um, you know, I could, I could, you know, God forbid, you know, I could get sick, I could get hit by a car, you know, there's no, we have today, but there's no guarantee that we're going to get tomorrow. And um, so my feeling is, um, enjoy the moment in the sun, and uh, it will eclipse, it always does, and then you know, and it'll be, it'll be someone, it'll be someone else standing up here next year. So, I'm, in, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. <sighs> Silence. <laughs> Hi, Nicole. Straight center back here. We're raising hand. If you can see. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Um, since you won big li for Big Little Lies, how good of a liar are you in real life? And what kind of lies would you really forgive? What kind of lies? Um, how good of a liar are you, first of all? Uh, I don't think I'm that good of a liar. I think, uh, I don't know, you'd have to ask um, my mom, I suppose. It was probably better when I was a teenager. Um, but I think now it's, it's, you know, I'm in a position where I get to I'm in a place in my life where I get to sort of speak my truth and speak how I feel and, and um, what was the other question? What kind of lies would you forgive? Uh, oh, this is, that, I mean, I, I find my mom always said when I was little, I, she didn't like the word lie because um, she felt it was too strong because a lot of times when children tell things that aren't true or change the what's change stories there's a reason and so a lot of times it's because of fear so I think um, you know I'm sorry to answer it so seriously but I'm in a kind of serious mood because I'm playing a serious character right now so anyway <laughs> hello and congratulations um, regarding the movement times up and all what's happening in the mm. industry do you think what do you think of uh, what fellow male actors are doing. Do you think it's enough? Do you think they should uh, stand up more for for uh, women? Should should they stand up more and support more I women? I mean, I'm I'm I, I think what we're doing now is we're trying to all we'll work together to instigate change. And I keep saying that. And I've I've said before I've worked 
for UN Women, which um, my primary cause at UN Women was to eradicate violence against women, and I've been doing that for two decades. Um, and so right now, for um, the voices of the voiceless to be heard, it's an incredible time. Um, can everyone do more? Absolutely. So. Congratulations. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> You know, at a moment like this, you are very generous in thanking your castmates and your husband and your family. Are you able to look inside and give yourself credit for what you've done to get to this place? Hard work, your, your choice of spirit, your spirit, your, you know, are you able to, to look inside yourself and, you know, pat yourself on the back? Um, I try to, it's not really my forte, <laughs> but, um, I think I just feel very privileged to be given the opportunity to do what I do. And I was told um, um, when I was young, if there's something, if you have a passion, you have something that you love, what an incredible gift in life because so many people don't have that. So I feel unbelievably grateful um, that I found my calling and it really feels like that. And a lot of times with acting, it's so much not about me or, or you as an actor, it's about the group and it's why I always try to acknowledge all of the people in my life and also who I work with because um, that's the nature of this business. It's not a singular business, it really isn't and I don't even like the word business because it's an, it, it for me, it comes from within, it is an art form, I cherish it and I love it um, and I'm just grateful that um, it's something that I get to do. So. <laughs> Hi, Nicole. Congratulations right here. Thank Hi, I'm you. Taylor with New York Hi. Magazine. Hi. Now, we know that your husband is no stranger to television. Yes. Would you ever consider even giving him maybe a little cameo on Big Little Lies or any of your screen projects, or is that just a no? Um, you'd have to ask him. He is out there. He's my biggest supporter. I'm so fortunate to have such an incredible partner in life. Um, and any chance I can, I will acknowledge what he does because he really is so um, kind. And I don't think that having a cameo in one of my projects would interest him, to be honest. But <laughs> I sleep with him. <laughs> Nicole, about halfway back here in the, on the aisle, Scott Hoover with Elle magazine. Yes, hi. Um, can you talk about a, a female performance? It's been such a great year of female performances, yeah. but is there a female performance that really has inspired you, one that you, you look to and, and kind of take some extra strength from watching? I mean, you look at Frances McDormand, you look at Saoirse, you look at this, you look at Margot Robbie right now, amazing performance, fantastic work. Um, but I wanted to acknowledge also the women that have come before me who are still vibrant and working in my speech. That was important to me. And there's so many of them. There's Helen Mirren, there's so many. But I just love that, that we're employed, that we're working, and that that is happening right now. So there's not one singular performance. Um, I mean, I watch actors and actresses, and I, I learn so much still, so much, every time I watch the performances. And they can be performances I've seen three or four times. I mean, I look back at the greats, and Ingrid Bergman, and Vivian Lee and um, Jean Moreau, and Anna, Anna Magnani, all of them, I'm just like, oh. So I'm a, I'm a fan as well, you know, and, um, and this is what I do. And so I'm just, I just love seeing other people um, having the opportunity because there's also, and Sam said this beautifully, and a number of, and so did um, um, William um, Macy when he said, um, there's so many struggling actors out there. And the other thing I love to tell actors is you are one role away from this. That's the great thing about this, this journey and this life as an actor. You are actually just one role away from it. And um, that gives people hope. And I love to be able to do that. Thank you. Thank you.